Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2013 AP Annual Conference. Please welcome the Senior Vice President of AP and Instruction for the College Board, Trevor Packer. So I've got something very interesting to show you. Now you know that we do these conferences all over the nation. We've had them in cities like Chicago and LA, San Francisco, Seattle, Houston, Washington, DC. And we've tracked AP statistics teachers average attendance across those sites. Let's look at that quickly. Here's the average number of AP statistics teachers that attend conferences not in Las Vegas. Now let's look at the average attendance at the two times when we have held the conference here in this city. What's going on there? What is that? Now, if there are any AP statistics teachers here in the room right now, they would ask me for a control group, right? What does this look like for a group of, say, AP English teachers? But since all 114 AP statistics teachers registered for this year's conference are out on the floors right now, putting their probability skills to good work, raising funds for their students' college applications, I will skip the control group and move on with my speech. So welcome to the 12th annual AP conference. As many of you know, our tradition is to begin this conference by unveiling the year's AP scores. In past years, students had to wait either for the mail or they had to participate in this sort of Byzantine telephone system whereby they would pay an extra fee, believe it or not, to call up and get their AP scores by phone. I mean, that, I, I found that sort of unconscionable. So this year, for the first time, as you know, AP students were able to receive their scores online. And, Part of the phenomenon here is that many of these students' computers have cameras installed in them. So there's been a sort of interesting um, self-promotional angle of the receipt of AP scores this year, as many students have filmed themselves clicking on our website and seeing the scores pop up. Um, they've sent that, they've then posted that on YouTube or they've sent those out by Instagram. And the students that do this are not representative, right? The sort of student that would then post their reaction on YouTube typically gets a high score. So I want to caveat what I'm going to show you in that way. But let's take a look at this year's receipt of AP scores. I want to challenge myself. AP is like a dress rehearsal for college. It gets you prepared for the real world. It gave me confidence, it gave me strength. Not only did the class challenge me, but it also made me grow as a student. It kind of shows you the initiative of hard work pays off at the end. Every minute counts. Every second counts. This is the best example of professional teamwork I've ever encountered. Also an opportunity for those people invested in teaching, both at high school and college level, to share their enthusiasm. Tackling a common task of getting student exams scored. I think the fairness of it, as a teacher, to go back to my students and constantly can reassure them that there's a process that's very interested in what's best for you. We're here to be able to make sure that kids get a good shake. Everybody comes together as a team and helps get the job done. Hi guys, so it's currently 5 a.m. right now. I took AP Physics B, AP Lit, and uh, AP U.S. History. I took AP Calculus, AB, and AP Psych. I took three AP exams this year. And you might be wondering, why am I up this late? I'm going to sign in and uh, let's see how these scores go. About to see my AP scores. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right, let's do this. <laughs> I haven't seen these before. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. I'm making the weirdest face right now, but I don't care because I made a bar. 
All right. <laughs> Woo! Oh my god. <laughs> five on physics and five on US history. The real. Awesome that I got these grades. I want to thank my physics teacher, Mr. Colavita, my U.S. history teacher, Mr. Tallarine. So this year's results continue to confirm the vision you have for expanding access to rigorous coursework for your students. This is the growth of AP student participation over the past five years. You would expect scores to decline significantly if 500,000 additional students were brought into these advanced courses. But here's the score, uh, the average scores over the past five years. Virtually no change, virtually no change. These are uh, AP exams, as you may not know, are not norm referenced. They are criterion referenced. So as student abilities change, the exam results change. As more students demonstrate the criteria for success, more students get scores of threes, fours, and fives. So I'd like to share some very specific information now about this year's AP scores in particular. But I want to be very careful because in speaking in aggregate, I will no doubt misrepresent every one of your classrooms because there is nothing truthful, precisely truthful, about aggregate results when compared to each of your individual classrooms. And words have great power. I think of a college roommate of mine who worked as a server at a bustling Times Square New York City restaurant. And the manager of that restaurant put in place an incentive process whereby the server who sold the most bottled water received extra pay, extra salary. And my roommate was determined to get that extra bonus by selling more bottled water. And he was very cunning. He used language in a powerful way. He would approach a table of guests in the restaurant and say, would you like the sparkling water or the still water, or would you simply prefer the municipal water? And just that one adjective made all the difference in the sales of bottled water in New York City. So words are, have great power, and I ask us to be very careful, and I will try to be very careful myself in speaking about these AP results. We should not judge from these results, but I hope that they will provoke dialogue, reflection, and thought. The results I share with you are based on common item equating. What that means is that these results are based on the reused AP exam questions. Every AP exam contains reused questions so that we can track student ability levels on common questions, questions that do not change. And then psychometricians and statisticians use that information to adjust the scoring on all of the new questions each year, right? In case any of those new questions are too difficult or too easy, they get adjusted based on how students perform on the reused exam questions. So first, let's look at predicted and normal results. What should be happening as AP grows is that that growth will result in some students scoring threes, fours, and fives, but even larger numbers of students scoring ones and twos, because as the program grows beyond the self-selected few who are pursuing a study of calculus-based physics, the ability levels of the newer students may be slightly lower, and so scores will go down. So that's what we saw in these five subjects, very normal outcomes. As the program expands, scores decline. Um, particularly in AP Calculus BC, where we saw a significant score decline, the most significant of any AP subject this year. So again, that is simply something that we would expect as educators take risks and open doors and say, let's, let's encourage students who have not been preparing for calculus all of their lives to try this course. So that's, that's something that normally happens. But AP has done better than that in the past. And so let's look at some, some other groups of subjects. These subjects had just slightly lower performance as the program expanded this year, slightly um, more scores of ones and twos than scores of threes, fours, and fives. The largest group of AP subjects did something noteworthy. These were AP subjects that expanded uh, the number of students that were participating in this sort of coursework, and the scores remained stable. No significant changes in scores at all despite serving uh, tens of thousands of additional students. Four AP subjects achieved something especially remarkable, expanding access to more students and simultaneously driving up the average score across all students in the course. 
To stress how unlikely this achievement is, can you imagine, for example, your high school track team including dozens of additional track students and as a result having a, a faster relay completion time? Well, that's what these subjects did. Finally, four additional AP subjects added more students and achieved major improvements in the mean scores. Of all 34 AP subjects, AP Computer Science jumps off the pages of data as the real star this year. A major success, a major success for students and educators. AP Computer Science had the highest growth rate of any AP subject this year, 19% growth, and also the highest score increase of any AP subject. But more on AP Computer Science in a few minutes. You will note, you've probably noticed that four AP subjects have been missing from this analysis. Three of those subjects are subjects that have been redesigned this year. AP Biology went through a process whereby the breadth of the course was decreased in order for teachers to have time to breathe, to focus, and to help their students learn the content in a very deep way, and then apply that content by calculating, predicting, justifying, explaining, testing the data. This has been really exciting, and we've been thrilled with AP teachers uh, excitement and passion for this new course. Now, something interesting has happened here with the scores on the old AP Biology exam. The exam was so broad and tested so much content that was not in any one college course that as college faculty reviewed the old AP Biology exam, the percentage of points that they set for students to get a five on that old exam was just 60% of the points. Can you believe that? To get a five on the old AP Biology exam, college faculty said, there's just too much stuff on here. We would only require about 60% of this to give an A to our own students. So that was the standard for the old AP Biology exam. But because the new exam has been redesigned, has been focused on core content and core skills, college faculty do expect students to know the majority of that content. So to get a five, college faculty and AP teachers that reviewed each question this year set 76% as the threshold that would need to be met by students in order to receive a score of five. Now, very few students met that threshold at this point, but because AP exams are criterion referenced and not norm referenced, as teachers help more students learn to perform in the ways that that free response section requires, the ability to calculate, to explain, to predict, to justify, those, the percentage of fives will steadily increase year over year. In AP Latin, teachers have historically taught Virgil's poetry, but through the redesign of AP Latin, college faculty asked that, that Caesar, a, 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 a renowned prose stylist, be included as a core requirement for that course. So AP Latin teachers taught for the first time this year Caesar's great work, The Gallic War. So that's been an exciting thing, and we saw very positive performance, slightly better performance in some ways, among the AP Latin students this year, particularly on some of the Caesar questions. So it was exciting to see this brand new author being taught with such skill by many of these teachers. In AP Spanish literature, teachers were excited to see a reduction by 30% in the amount, in, in the size of the reading list, so that teachers would have much more time to focus on the diversity of authors in that course in much greater depth. But still, one subject is missing, and it is here that I want to be most careful, because we have seen something troubling in the largest of all AP subjects, AP English Language and Composition. So AP English Language and Composition saw tremendous growth this year. Last year, there were 267,000 scores of three or higher. This year, the program grew by 32,000 additional students. So, it's tremendous growth, but there was not a single increase in a score of three or better, despite expanding that course to 32,000 more students. And in fact, there was a drop in the scores of three or better. There were 5,000 fewer scores of three or better in AP English language this year, despite having provided that opportunity to 32,000 more students. This sort of outcome should certainly give us pause. If the expansion of an AP subject has not resulted in a single additional student achieving a score of three or higher, what is happening? Our first question was whether AP English language course enrollments had simply maxed out. Were we, uh, is, has, have educators reached the point that every student that is able to succeed in AP English language, are they all getting in at this point? So we have a way of looking at that. We were able to check that hypothesis by looking at uh, 
the, the likelihood of success in AP English language among students that took the PSAT. And so we can look across the pool of students that took the PSAT in the United States in 2012 and determine, have those students then taken an AP English language course? And we looked at the 2011 data as well. And so here's what we found. Among Asian students, five of the students whose PSAT scores indicate that they should succeed in AP English did take the course, but an equal number did not. Among Hispanic students, four Hispanic students had taken the AP English course, but six had not. Among African American students, three took the AP English language course, but seven who had that same, who had similar levels of readiness for AP English language did not take the course. Among white students, similar, three and seven. And among American Indian students, three took the course, seven did not. So the majority of students in the United States whose PSAT scores indicate that they are ready to succeed in AP English language are not yet taking the course. So the data don't allow me to conclude that the problem with AP English language scores this year is that every student in the country who should be taking the course already is. That's just not what's happening here. So we look at some other things as well. We look at the students that actually did take this exam this year, were they prepared for it? Interestingly, 82% of the students that took AP English language had taken the PSAT. So we can really look at their readiness for AP and get a sense of it. And a large, large number of those who took AP English language hadn't demonstrated the sort of readiness for it that a PSAT score would indicate. So of those students that took AP English language but did not have PSAT scores that indicated that they had AP potential, only 19% of them scored a three or better. But the kids whose PSAT scores did indicate that they had AP potential, 79% of them earned three or better. So we look at the pool of students and more than 25% of this year's AP English language students were students that did not have PSAT scores that indicated that they were ready for that course. So that's interesting, but that doesn't really give me a firm uh, sort of point of conclusion or recommendation for educators. It's, a, it's an incredibly complex issue because after all, 19% of the students whose PSAT scores said they wouldn't really be likely to succeed, did succeed. So the recommendation can't simply be, let's, let's, let's use PSAT scores and any student who doesn't meet those PSAT scores, they, they won't be in the AP course because it would be ethically incredibly problematic for us, right, to say to these students who did succeed, that they shouldn't have been in that course. So, so we at the College Board do not have a, a, a solution for you, but I, I, I'm a great believer that when the AP teaching community has access to transparent information about student results, dialogue will happen in school buildings, in professional development workshops, in online communities that can help us better understand how to serve those students who are taking AP English language and support them in their work, and how to reach the even larger number of students that deserve to be in that course, but are not. So I applaud the AP community for the work you will do to help us understand what is happening here and how we can address this challenge. In 2011, when President Obama recognized the National Teacher of the Year on the White House lawn, that teacher happened to be an AP chemistry teacher, Michelle Shearer, and I love what she said, she said, the, the, that event on the White House lawn was the day after the AP chemistry exam. So she had been in DC and had missed being with her students on exam day. And so she said, uh, with, with Obama standing on one side and Secretary Duncan standing on the other side of her, this AP chemistry teacher said, my students will tell you that I love to give pep talks. And Friday was their last one before the AP chemistry exam. And among other things I said to them, you are problem solvers. No matter how challenging the questions, have confidence, forge ahead, and make progress towards solutions. And while we would all want all of our students to earn fives, let's look briefly at this year's questions that even your students who got ones were able to solve, just to pay tribute to the problem solving that you have fostered in your classrooms. So here's one question from the AP macroeconomics exam. This is a production possibilities curve. Even AP macroeconomic students who scored ones and twos were able to use this curve to analyze a recession and recommend fiscal policy to resolve that recession. The world is better in 2013 than it was in 2012 because you helped tens of thousands of students learn to solve such problems. 
every AP statistics student scoring, or most AP statistics students scoring ones and twos were able to do something with this information. This is data collected from an environmental study of crows that had ingested lead, had been injured by lead, lead ingestion. And AP students were able to apply key principles of statistical inference to determine whether the, the amount of lead that was ingested by the wildlife was unhealthy. And then they were able to construct a 95% confidence level for their findings. Would that all claims made by the media and researchers were subjected to such scrutiny as AP students provided, even when they scored ones and twos. The world is a better place in 2013 because AP statistics teachers taught tens of thousands of students to solve such problems. Even AP art history students scoring ones and twos tended to be able to solve the problem of how a 13th century African architect created sacred space from mud and adobe brick by analyzing the floor pans and images of the great mosque of Jaina in, in Mali. The world is a better place now because AP art history teachers taught tens of thousands of students to solve problems related to the design of sacred spaces. And even AP biology students scoring ones and twos tended to be able to describe in depth the effects of alcohol on urine production. I'll leave it to you to judge whether the world has been improved as a result <laughs> of being able to solve such a problem. Now the AP computer science program, as 